Radio Junkies Podcast Season 1 Episode 0 Let's get scratching Actually, I don't even know really how to start this Because fucking I haven't done a podcast in a fucking while Because the last time we fucking We did one of these was I actually don't know when was the last time we actually did this. 14, 2016, maybe? I don't know. What I hate is that we deleted the old podcast. But I will say what was stupid was that we both recorded it and we would both upload to our own channel for some reason. Oh, oh, man. Yeah, I don't know why, but we did that at one point. And I don't think there was much benefit to it at all really but neither of us ended up keeping i mean i don't know if you privated it but i whole ass deleted it oh no i think uh, ooh, ooh, i think the channel i put all that up on is like deleted now so i think because this is just gonna be fucking episode zero or whatever i'm gonna have this as just like shoot the shit episode <laughs> of us just fucking testing the waters with this shit so then we at least have something put out i guess i don't fucking know um, but I do. I, originally, I was gonna start off by, like, spouting a bad take, but instead, I'm gonna say that I've realized I straight up fucking hate dogs. <laughs> dogs? <laughs> because, um, like... my, my sister, um, my sister is watching her friend's two dogs. And so okay. they're, and they're, like, not even loud dogs. Well, they bark if the other dogs start barking or if the bigger dog is like sitting in his cage. Literally, I went to go like warm up some food and I forgot to close the little BB gate we have for the dogs, right? So mm. one of the dogs like comes in and I hear a noise and I thought it was like my sister like opening the gate for the dog. I turn around, I see the dog walk in and immediately go to the bigger dog that is just chilling in his cage and sh it just starts barking at him. I'm like, bro, why are you trying to start a fight with a dog that's bigger than you? It's, it's small dog mentality. Like, every dog, like, every small dog has, like, Napoleon syndrome. <laughs> Essentially. Because even um, our main, like, the main dog we have that is a smaller, she always tries to, like, bark at him and shit, but the second he comes near her, she fucking books it. Oh, yeah, man. That's, that's, that's real-life mentality, though. But these two Ooh. small dogs that, like, I don't even know... They just keep, like, anytime I walk up my room, they're just standing there staring at me. And I'm like, bro, what do you want? I'm just, like, looking at them. It's dog mentality, man. <laughs> go. And I just stare do. at them, and I'm always watching my feet when I'm walking around them. Because they're fucking small baby dogs. Well, not babies. They're kind of old. But, like, they're babies to me. They're fucking small dogs walking around. And... I noticed that both of them were like walking towards me and I and like when I walked in my room and I immediately just looked at them and shut the door. I don't even I don't pet them or anything. I just fucking let them do their thing. Don't go oh, near yeah, me. I mean, it's already what? law that the freaking only one of the um our main dog is allowed in my room because she's old and doesn't like is less like the chewing cables and shit. These are dogs that don't do not live at my house. I don't know who the fuck like what you do. So I'm not gonna let you in my room. I don't consciously even... taking like dogs sit other people's dogs when you share a home with someone. I mean uh, like... they're like friends of my mom's as well. They're like okay. my sister's okay. friend is friend with her mom. That makes sense? Yeah, I, yeah. I get what you mean. Like, if anything, I yeah, think like, my sister and her friend are friends because of their moms knowing each other. I don't know. It's that, yeah, it's that know, kind of shit. It's one of those forced friendships, sort of. Yes. I won't say forced, but it's like it's like those, I have to like you because I'm supposed to like you, and if I don't yeah. like you, it'll bring problems in the yeah. future. <laughs> I think they are genuine friends, though, so, hey, it works out in the end, I guess. Anyways... I honestly, I don't think I have much of a take that I was gonna like s spout. I don't. I think I had one at one point, but my main thing right now is that yeah, I don't like dogs. And uh, before anyone like were to say anything, no, I don't like. I don't like fucking fight dogs or some shit. I know I actively avoid them. Like that's the kind I don't like, where I just don't want to be around them. Okay, I get what you mean. So you don't like dogs themselves, right? You, it's not that, oh, I hate dogs in general. I just don't like being around dogs is what you mean. Yes. Like, 
the like right. the, like I the only it. dog that I actually am okay being around is the one you saw like in my camera that one time, just because she's yeah. an older dog, and so for the most part she's not like first of all she's small. Small rat dog, and also because fucking she doesn't really do a whole lot. Like, if she wants to play, her equivalent is that, oh, just throw a toy and I'll get it and just try to take it from me. And that's all I want. And fucking pet me and then I'm good. Other than that, she just kind of yeah. chills and sits. Our dog is sort of like that, kind of. Like, our, our dog is like, it's really small, of course. Um, It's like one of those, like, smaller breeds and all that good stuff. But, um, our dog... Um, our dog just has these random sporadic bouts of energy just like it's like takes, your dog is younger. Down one minute. oh yeah most definitely most my definitely. dog it's probably old, so that's why she's like kind of low maintenance i guess you could say yeah um because the only time i ever like, see her actually like fucking high energy is when there's someone around that she does not like <laughs> which is everyone damn i know fucking well, I even the um two small I dogs in the house and like I've never seen her dislike a, another other dogs in this way because usually when she dislike other dogs she barks at them right. These two yeah. dogs, um, when I I remember my mom picked me up from work and like she, you know the other the dog was in the car and I was like oh okay that's, that's different but okay and when we walked in the house the other two like the two dogs that I haven't seen before started barking at me, and our main one she just kind of looked at them. I'm like wow why is she so quiet and she's like yeah no I don't think she likes them at all. It's like, wow, this is different. Usually she would be barking, but I guess since they're her own size, she just kind of looks at them. And it actually is, because uh, of wood. I feel like one thing, though, that, that the kind of... I think one thing is that, like, sets people off with dogs is that, one... How can I word it? To where I don't want to, like, generalize an entire, like, population of people who are kind of, like, iffy on dogs... Is that like if you own a dog, not saying that it's like imperative to train that dog or not, but it, it's nice if you do. Um, if the dog is some chill dogs, and not gonna like jump on me and shit, I am more likely to be okay around it. But energetic yeah, dogs, I don't. I'm not really into. I don't like big dogs either. It, they're more likely that, to be energetic, or at least in my experience. Think that like our dog, probably since she's probably since she's like younger and all that stuff. She likes meeting new people and all that good stuff that generally like like makes her excited. So like when she meets new people, she goes fucking ballistic. Mm -hmm. But um, once she'll bug you to high hell or whatever. But after a while, she'll kind of like leave you alone for a little bit, and she won't really bug you after that for a while. She does that with everybody, and um, like she'll since she's small, like Admittedly she's not getting anywhere high. <laughs> She's no, nowhere no. going like too high up near your shin. Like she's not going no higher up past like your your knee. So it's like like oh yeah, I could punt you if I wanted to. Admittedly, these two like random dogs, they're not like they didn't run up to me like that or anything. They all kind of like they kept their distance. They would like slowly walk up to me and sniff my foot. And then kind of just step around and mind their business. The only time I saw one of them actively following me was when I was like taking a plate out because it was clear that they wanted food, or my food at least. Aside from that, they're always kind of keeping their distance, looking at me and slowly walking up to me. Which is why so, I'll like look at them while they're slowly walking. I was like, "Oh, you're trying to come in my room and shut the door." Oh yeah. I think, I think, like, since I, I pretty much, I practically grew up with dogs. I grew up around fucking animals in general. You could call me George of the Jungle if you wanted to. But, like, I, I think with me is that only kind of animal I'm extremely iffy on, I wouldn't even know, not cats. I'm, I'm not, I'm pretty iffy on, like, like gerbils and hamsters and shit like that. Because I have one bad escape. experience. One bad experience. No, I was a kid and my cousins had, I think it was like a hamster or a gerbil. I don't remember which one it was. They're practically the fucking same to me. But um, I remember when I was a kid, the little hamster was in its cage, right? And I picked up the cage because I was told to take it in the room. So upon me grabbing the little handle to the cage, it was all like, it was all like, like wired little metal with like purple paint. The events were so traumatizing. It's pretty foggy, but I remember <laughs> picking it up, right? Don't know where this hamster got the hops from, but it took and it bit my thumb. 
So my <laughs> first reaction was take, drop the cage, kick it, and kick it, and like and scream, right? <laughs> exactly what I did. So I had to go home. Luckily, it, it didn't bite me enough to where I needed to get like stitches or something, but it bit enough to draw blood. So I'm like, yeah, I don't like, I don't like hamsters and gerbils and all that shit. See, the thing is, I, I don't, don't like know rat. what made me hate dogs because I know as a kid I used to want one, but then at some point it changed and I didn't want one anymore. I think it's the, I think it's like, I won't even say it's a bad experience kind of thing. I think it's just something you just kind of grow up to like dislike. I think the any any time I've ever had to be around a dog as a kid, it was a big dog that would like with one of the big dogs that would fucking bark at you and seem kind of vicious. So I think I ended up like turning to the other side of being like, nah, I don't fuck with y'all. Y'all kind of sp- yeah. oh shit, y'all kind of spooky. I, I'm not for it. Yeah, that's that's the thing that's like that's one thing a lot of people will do though. Like people will look at a big dog and freak the fuck out when it barks. Admittedly, they they have the free right too. That would scare me too. And then people, well, I remember, you know what? Yeah, it totally was just fucking fucking being around big dogs and shit. Because I remember that freaking um, I was I don't remember like the events of like where why I was at this place and all that. I know it was with my mom though for the weekend, and I know that there was like a dog someone had or two dogs maybe, and I just know people kept fucking with me saying like they'll jump over the gate and shit, and that was enough for me to be like I don't want to fuck with some dogs. Shit, leave me alone. No. I mean, I, I grew up with big dogs. Like, I had, like, two gargantuan, like, five-foot standing up, like, sized dogs. So it was kind of like, it's like, okay, I can I can, I can can cope with this. Yeah, I'm pretty but sure it, it took that hamster me. bite in my fucking hand. And I don't fuck with, I don't fuck with hamsters, gerbils, any kind of rodent. Well, actually, no. It made me remember, uh, I, I don't know if I've ever even told the story on, like, a Media Junkies episode. Because I, I, I know I've told the story before. But I fucking had like two. I think they were literally, literally called beta fish. I don't fucking know what they were. That's what I remember. I think, but I could be wrong. I don't know fish like yeah. that. But I just know I had two fish, and um, they literally like. I I remember I would feed them and shit. I would actually try to take care of them. And I remember I think I came home from school or I just kind of walked in the kitchen at one point. It could have been a day, could have been a day of school. Could have just be me randomly walking into the kitchen at one point. I don't remember, but I just know they crushed themselves under the on under like little rocks we had in the fishbowl at the bottom of it. You know, yeah. uh, crushed themselves under it. And like it's not an easy thing for you to do. It was like by intent, which is like damn, bro, these fish committed suicide. And then I remember, fish recently, out. <laughs> I remember recently, I, I saw a TikTok where a guy was fucking like, he was flushing down uh, his goldfish because he thought it had died. And then, because the, like, and he said that like, when he thought it died, he let it sit there for 10 minutes or so to make sure it wasn't asleep. And then when he, he took it out of the bowl and let it sit there, you know how when you take a fish out of the bowl, it starts flopping around and shit, freaking out. The fish didn't do that. So then he, he, he realizes that, all right, my fish is dead. And he goes to flush the fish down the toilet, and then suddenly it starts swimming. As it's, like, swirling and shit. Fucking think the few ten since I've had fish. They all didn't actually, yeah, they, they, they all died. They, they all died. Because I, I feel like, fi- I was a kid, man, so it's like it's a real good starter pet. Especially if it's like a goldfish. Plus, my I'm dad, sure my dad already like, like had like I don't know if he had a fish tank in his room yet, I, but he probably did. Does where did he? Oh, he put. Okay, I know where he put it. I'm just trying to remember where he even put the fish tank now, but I remember. But he had one in his room at one point, but I don't know if this was when he did it. But we also had a fish tank in our living room, so he, my dad, knows how to take care of fish. And I'm pretty sure that if I wasn't really doing anything, he was. So, fuck it. I just know those fish, they wanted out. They, they didn't want to be there. So, well, shit. Again, like, every fish I have had has died. Um, Because it's like, they're, 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 they're like, they're starter pets, dude. If a goldfish dies, it's whatever. It's like, okay. People probably might argue me different. I will admit that when my fish died, I was just kind of like, huh, okay. (laughs) I don't know. I mean, I wasn't... Death to music, kid, was just like, oh, okay. It happens. That that sucks, I guess. I don't know. I'm fucking weird. 
You can't. I don't think thing is. I don't even think you can get attached to a goldfish. Because I know it didn't have that fish that I got for that long anyways. So I, I guess that's why I wasn't really hurt by it. Because I was just like, oh, I didn't really get to have them that long. So I'm not really attached. That sucks, I the guess. One thing, though, I've owned maybe one cat. And this was around the time I had got my first actual like animal as a pet. Not gonna hold you. Um, Loki mistreated the thing, which I feel bad about because I, I was a kid, did not know any better. Um, so in order to take and free the cat, my mom took and uh, let it loose because <laughs> the poor little thing did not want to stay with us anymore. Luckily, luckily, you think I would have known better, but no, I didn't. Um, records say. Records say that I shot a Nerf gun at a cat, but at my grandma's cat in particular, but... Okay, but was it like I the digress. little, like, soft Nerf darts? Or was it like the Nerf oh, balls? Yeah. No, it was like the little uh, Nerf darts, dude. The thing with little rubber tips on it. A record say, though, but not to my recollection. It may not be. But, you know. I'm not sure. But since I'm allergic to cats probably why i was so fucking evil in the first place i i didn't know i was allergic to cats until like later on in life but fucking, fucking... i don't know how i ended up liking cats because my neighbor had a bunch of cats i never had a cat cats are low maintenance they are low maintenance well, uh, cats... they're pretty chill and i don't know i kind of fuck with their vibes Unless they piss and poop on their own lazy. they eat on their own all they gotta do is make sure you feed and drink you just take him to the vet let you know I'm... when you want when he wants to be fed or he or she fucking whatever the pet is. It'll cats will let you know. They'll fucking claw at your door and shit. I I don't know. I think the fucking like quote unquote annoying shit cats do are just fucking funny to me. Like climbing on doors and shit. Well, one thing I will not I say I will not I don't like about cats is the I don't have an issue with picking an animal up, right? I have no issue with that. But as soon as my body starts to become like a fucking jungle gym, this is when it becomes an issue, especially if I'm like in the middle of doing something. Like, no. no. As long as it doesn't One fucking thing. claw at me, I think I'd be fine. Or as long as it's not closed, that I'd rather not get possibly shredded. Like, um... And one cats thing, like the one fuck thing is a red cats really me. like to be all over, you know, think about it. They'll go... Because I remember back when I... Uh, I went to who she shall not be named. And I'm, we're gonna keep we're gonna keep that joke even here. We're just gonna be she who shall not be named. I went to her house once, and she had a cat, and that cat just kept like walking under my legs and shit. And I know cats kind of like trying to feel around Ooh. and like know who you are and shit, but I just now realized like yeah, cats will fucking walk all over you, not all over you. Like, but, like, yes, walk your around jeans you and like a cigarette. You've never seen it. One thing though. Uh, even though I'm, uh, I don't even know, dude, is that I can't see myself like later on in life owning a pet. Cause, um, at least, at least unless I have like a partner or a significant other that owns this pet and thing, because I, I feel like, yeah, I can take care of an animal on my own. But the thing Man, is, is that like I have my own rules too. here. If you want a dog, we're having a rat dog because I've had a rat dog and I'm comfortable with a fucking rat dog. But if you're having a, if you want a cat, I'm fine with that. Hella down for it. I'm not more down for more than one dog or two cats, though. I'm gonna be honest. And it I and it and it has more. to be one or the other. I'm not. We're not having multiple. I. Oof. We were talking about this yesterday. I fucking, I can't stand people who will have <laughs> people who have more than two like dogs in their house. I feel like there are people uh, we know like, who are going to be like offended by people. this. But no, nah, dude, fucking, I'm sorry. I hate people who have more than two dogs because first of all, they or two. No, not just. I don't know about cats, but I just know a lot of people will get like mini dogs for no reason. Same for cats. And I think that's like unless it's like your whole sh like your whole shtick. Like if you live on like a farm or something or like a prairie of some kind, go wild. Have as many dogs as you want. Dude, but there was one dude at our school who had pet household. wolves. Man, he was probably fucking capping. No, 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 he wasn't because he lived in my neighborhood and I saw his brother walking the wolves. 
Uh, I was like, I think I was just like skating in my neighborhood once, and I was just seeing dude with a bunch of wolves. I'm like, yo, what the fuck? He was telling the truth. That's why you laugh at him and call him a fucking nerd. <laughs> yeah, right. Freaking dude, I'm talking about everyone fucking loved him. God. Anyways, enough of the pet talk. Let's move on to your past week. What what past games? Week? Have, yeah, what games you played? Fucking anime, whatever. Like, what have you been up to? Um, in the past week, I have been playing Resident Evil Eight. I yeah, have been this playing. Is like what your third or fourth mm -hmm. run of the game? No, no, no this, I already did my three runs. I, I did my hardcore run was just for like for like shoots and giggles. My two standard runs for were the um, were for the review because I didn't want to, which is taking me a while to do since I don't have all like my my shit together. But um, I've been uh, playing dude, that. It's taking me a while it. to work on my review. I finally have a camera and it's shit. Hard. Dude, it's I finally got done with the audio part of my review, uh, and I'm not talking about re for me mm. reviewing um, Resident Evil Eight, but and I, no, I'll talk about it more when I get to like my week. But it's for a fucking other game that I'm playing, or I've been pl or I played, and I got done with the audio for it. But God, just actually editing it now that I'm at it, I'm like shit. I don't want to do this. It's no, been like, like two or three, two months in the making, and it's like, man, most people can get this done within like the span of a week and a half, possibly, depending on the, how long yeah. the game is. I can't believe it. Like, this is why people get an editor. Thing was, is the thing was, is that like editing the audio for me did not take long. It took me like all like two days, but seeing as how like me putting in the clips and all that good shit it probably won't take me too long to edit because i didn't make a whole lot of jokes in it how long was the audio but, um, like when you recorded like all together when it was recorded not when you cut it um it was about 40 minutes it's about 20 minutes Yeesh, now. about 20 because the freaking video i was working on was like i think 20 minutes and i gave i'm like i gave up multiple times just because i couldn't and the thing is is that i wasn't consistent about a way for me to know about like good takes i guess you could say i'm gonna turn off noise noise suppression because no. i'm gonna show you an example of something i do but um something i was doing occasionally to be like okay i like that take of like whatever line of recording is that i do this because uh, let's it, separate it because then you would know because it, it makes a certain kind of wavelengths on the um like on the timeline or whatever in premiere yeah. you would see that and you know that's that's like the snaps you did so then when you mm -hmm. go there, you know that's your take. And I and I had that for some of them, but sometimes I didn't do it. Uh, so you didn't know which one was which? Yeah, so then I would just... Nope. I, I had to actually sit down and listen to the whole entire audio. Pause, cut, listen, pause, cut, listen. I just had to listen to it as I went. Which I don't yeah, think is the I best, what possibly I used to do. not I the best way to go about it. The one thing... I used to do i would take especially before i started using adobe audition and like recording all in one sitting i would take i would do a take of a sentence if i didn't like it i would do that take again and i would go sentence by sentence for the whole whole script but then i stopped doing that because it was like hey, it's too much time too much yeah, effort, i try so. to i but if i'm if i notice that there's a certain word that i struggle with saying like smoothly if i'm trying to say a whole paragraph that's when I'll start, like, maybe end it off. Like, I'll say say up until the point of, like, an end of a sentence, and then I'll start off the next one so that yeah. I probably won't slur my words as hard. Mm -hmm. this fuck. What else I've been playing this week, side of Resident Evil 8, I've been playing a lot of Blasphemous, you know this. Oh, I've yeah. also been playing Ultimate Ninja Storm, the first one, and, which I, oh god, I, I love that shit so much. Like, that fucking game. Um... What else was there? I would say Under Night and Birth, but um, I can't play Dude, that shit. I played I'm that shit on, like uh, twice. You know. <laughs> I, I, I clocked in like, four, like forty hours already. <laughs> I have a hundred well, minutes exactly, play. and it's like it's I not even one. bad. It just I don't know. I just don't feel the will to play it. I don't know. This wasn't a bad game. It was all right. It just I don't know. You know, clears are. Yeah, right. yeah. It has some cool shit. I just wasn't that hooked onto it because I kind of knew I was gonna be playing it like that. No, I understand what you mean. Um, like our main fighting game as of late has been primarily Street Fighter. Street Fighter, Street Fighter more than it has ever been, honestly. 
Yeah. Because the closest to Street Fighter before was back when I started just getting into fighting games was uh, CVS. Yeah. Um, my intention when I was playing Blossom was like, yeah, I'll, I'll do a fucking script on this. But I realized that it was a Metroidvania and that I'm, I was struggling to play that shit. So I was like, no. Like a lot of the, the clips of me would be me dying and like rerunning through areas again. And that game was already lengthy enough as it is. Mm. So I was like, no. Um, what I have I bought a demo recently, of it, but I haven't even tried it out yet. It's just been sitting on my desktop. It is like, not a bad it game. It was literally no. right before you like told me you even bought it. I was like, I think a week before I downloaded the demo because I saw a video on it. Uh, there's a dude on YouTube. I think is it was Narrow. He did a review. He he has, um, he has like reviews on his channel and whatnot. And he does. I think he had two of them previously of just a string of Metrovania games that he could recommend. And it's how I. It may be how I found out about D-Lit, but I think he also did um, Luna Nights as well. There are some other uh, Metrovanias in it, um, like what Gato Robato, um, a robot named Fight as well. There's um, a lot of yeah. them he reviewed, but I just know I, that is definitely where I found out about D-Lit because I think that's where I found out about it before he even played it because I think I saw footage of it just like out of something quick for an example i don't know maybe i'm wrong i just know that i saw dlit in someone's youtube video at one point and that's how i found the game speaking of dlit um dlit in relation to toho luna nights and the whole like like team ladybug and everything um they have a game pretty sure this is like most recent pretty sure there's like a new title or whatever i'm not entirely sure didn't do any research. pulling up their um, page um Ginso Kyo night festival Sukio Night Festival. Is it, wait a minute, is that a new one? It it seems to be like it. Because the most recent update was April eleventh. I'm trying to go to like one of the games in my library from them so I can just quickly get to like their page. Uh Teen Ladybug. Hold on. I do not see it. Fuck. Let me see. Is there any way for me to what quickly if... find this playism? I don't know. Um, I'll bring it, it up again another... if I come upon it. It looks like a another Metroidvania, Toho style, of course. Um, my prayer is that it's not entirely in Japanese, but if so, no issue there. I'll I'll figure a way out. But um, only reason I I looked at this and I was like, I'll play it and I'll buy it, was because I had it on. I had it in my eye. Oh, I found for a while. it. Oh, it's like ten bucks right now. It looked pretty good. Oh, this. Looks oh yeah, good. most definitely. I was like, this? I had to snag. And I also got I got um I got deal it today too. You bought it? Did not install. Yeah, I bought it today because it was on sale. Oh, good, because I was going to talk more about D-Lit anyways. Because uh, that game, I enjoyed it a lot, but it kind of felt a little bit all over the place in terms of difficulty. And I go a little bit more into this in my review about it, which who knows when that'll even come out. So, But I was talking about how the game starts off kind of easy not easy but like it starts off with like a decent difficulty it's not too hard not too easy and then you start leveling up and everything you get more weapons and it feels like you're kind of getting better but then let's say it has level design at points that feels like the clock tower in Soten, where yeah. you're trying to get to somewhere but there's enemies in the way you're getting knocked into shit they'll have an there's an area i remember in particular that at one point i was dying around often because i just couldn't get through it quick enough without like losing a lot of health was that there was a bunch of spikes and there was like i think these skeletons that i don't remember what their deal is because honestly it was like a month or a month ago i think i played dlit but there's enemies that work based off of like whatever element you have on currently so say in this fire and wind so say if you have on the wind yeah. element and the enemy uses wind attacks it's going to not feel any of your wind attacks, so you have to switch to the fire element. Yeah. It, so you would have to do shit like that to keep up with them. Or, um... Actually, I remember now. The issue was is that there's these um enemies that uses um a shield. And they would put up their shield, but then they'll like do a quick like stab out while they have their shield up, I think. And it made it annoying to like get to where i needed to go because they were standing on platforms that i literally needed to get on but they were in yeah. my way so it just kind of made shit annoying sometimes you get past that hurdle and then you're back to like a decent pace again when you're like get to whatever boss is up next which by the way the bosses in that game 
are the best part of my opinion it i go i talk about it in my review even that like the bosses in that game are for the most part genuinely pretty fun because you played luna knights and it, it has the similar bullet hell like thing going on with it but it's not as intense as luna knights i can i should say because yeah. it's a little bit easier because it uses the elemental switching system because as I said, enemies, if you're using wind and they they use wind attacks, they're not going to feel wind. You have that same thing. If something shoots wind at you and you have your wind element turned on, you will not take wind damage and it fills up your meter for the other one. I think it does. like It fills up meter so that your attacks are stronger with either element. So if you have the fire one on, you take no fire damage. So some bosses that have it to where they'll shoot like rings of fire and rings of wind at you and you'll have to like kind of in a rhythm like switch between the two so you take no damage and uh, not gonna lie that shit was actually kind of fun i really enjoyed that about the bosses some bosses is a little hard to tell some bosses have straight up attacks you can't avoid though but for the most part most of the bosses are fine they feel like they feel like more of a boss than a lot of the soten bosses where you can just kind of stand there and keep hitting them and they die they have patterns going on and whatnot that you have to avoid and such. Um, one thing you'll notice late in the game is that because you get a bow and arrow, you can uh, you can um, like shoot your arrows at the enemies, and it's clearly the better option if they're doing attacks that like you no way you're gonna get close to without getting hit. Because for example, there's one dude who has like a sword and shield. He barely uses his shield, by the way, and. Um, he does all of these combos on you and shit and you can just stand far away and shoot your arrows at him and you're for the most part fine you can get up and close <coughs> when you can but shooting spamming arrows is really good the issue is is that you can't spam them without worrying about your magic because your magic is your arrow ammo also your magic yeah. ammo as well you can you have you don't have inputs for magical spells like in Soten, but you find like magic you, you can use to like for like summons i guess you could say some of them are pretty good too but the best way to go about it is you realize by the end of the game that you're gonna need to um stock up on like mana potions and health potions because sometimes it's just gonna get fucking difficult well, that 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 i i know because i know toho luna knights had that um that issue it was um it was with um that boss that that fucking cop lady i can't remember her name yeah it wasn't Mitori? the final final yeah, Nitori. Um, we'll say, even though I gave her plenty of like little gems and shit, the boss fight was not hard. For me, it's, it's I just it it and D-Lit, D Lit has the same issue that I had with Luna Nice. Only difference is that I beat D Lit. Is that I don't like I really don't like final bosses where you have a first phase and then uh oh second harder phase oh you don't have enough health looks like you, uh oh you died you got to redo the fight over again I hate that so much um, Castlevania Lament like, of Innocence you, has that same thing you, you can what? exploit it you can exploit it with Luna Knights right you know how like you get the grays or whatever for health mm -hmm. get hit once just dad like slide on the floor as much as you can get the grays you get like the blue grays for the health like you get so much health back cheese yeah. that entire fight i probably could could have beaten that fight but i didn't have the patience for it because i know how lunar knight is I, I was expecting hella bullet hell yeah. shit to dodge and i was just like fuck this i beat the game yeah. deedly I, I totally deedly isn't as bad because it's not as bullet hell heavy and also the first fight you got to do isn't even difficult i um without saying anything about the story because it is like kind of important story stuff even though it was like it's kind of it's stuff i'm I guessing is from like the novels and or show that there is because there is an anime for deedlet that takes place before the game and um you're just fighting these like dudes in a pattern they're all the same person so they all take health together or damage together you just gotta fight them and you realize that there's a pattern to them after like two or three like deaths or so and they become super easy so that you can just get straight to the final boss but the final boss is a lot of, i don't know if i could say a lot of shit going on or just like just really big like you know blasts and shit that you have to dodge and shit it's not as difficult 
as it is after your first as you thought it was after you like your first death or so once you start getting the pattern down but i st it still irritated me that i had to like restart do that previous fight again over and over if i died i i don't really like that if lament of innocence did that you would have to if you lost to um what's his name death you would have to go back fight that one no you have to go back to before you entered the room or went up the stairs or in one of the two you would have to go up to that vampire dude who you couldn't beat before hit him once with a vampire killer so that it shows a cutscene that oh hey you can take damage now you, or i can take damage from your whip now what and then you actually fight him you beat him and then you have to fight death and death is i remember being super fucking like annoying and difficult and eventually i beat it because um most people probably would have used the save state but i like actually kind of playing on consoles themselves if i can Bro, so i would have hit the save state button i would have said yeah no all if anytime dude. there's like a boss fight like that and i can use save states i totally would but i like playing a lot of my games on consoles themselves just because i don't know it feels a little bit better to play on a console and um that boss i had to actually beat it and it felt good to actually beat that shit. but i'm never going back to lament of innocence fuck no. that <laughs> another boss that is like that for me that i wish I, um if i were to ever emulate which i don't think i ever will because i own the game is devil may cry yeah. one because i love that game so much fuck mundus God, you love Devil May Cry one more than most people do, <laughs> and I don't know why. Because DMC three is my third favorite game of all time, but there's something about DMC one in particular that I really enjoy and makes it fun to go back to. And I think it's more that it's kind of it's closer to Resident Evil than other than all the other Devil May Cries to me. I don't know. I love yeah. its setting and everything. Um, for its more simple combat, which it does have tech and shit, you can, um, like, juggle an enemy with enemy step or some shit. You can do enemy step juggle into, like, a shotgun or some shit. I don't fucking know. I saw a video on it at one point. Um, there's just a lot of shit about it that makes it kind of fun to go through, especially when you start learning the game better. But the one thing I never look forward to every time is the final nightmare fight and the fight with Mundus. The final nightmare yeah. fight I had died I I don't know if I have the footage of it anymore but I played through that and I think I spent an hour trying to beat him because I think and I think you said you had an easy time with it but for me it's like it's it was too oh, much yeah, it was too much going on and you you said you were playing the original version of DMC1 right yeah, I was playing. Yeah, I was playing on um, PS2. Yeah, I'm. Sh I am shocked you had an easy. T oh shit! I am shocked you had an easy time with it because DMC one on PS2 actually has like increased like damage that you receive, and I think you do less damage. Maybe I just know PS2 DMC one is actually harder. Oh wow! Yeah, I have the definitive experience. HD collection is because that's what they did when it came to Japan. I or not Japan, America. I think. And HD collection has the proper Japanese like difficulty, I believe. I think, don't quote me on that. I just know that you can look it up online that there is differences in damage depending on what version you're playing, if it's the HD collection or the um, original. And one Nightmare. Will... Uh, what? I said, one thing I will say though, um, when I first played DMC, when I'd have to play it again, because it's been a couple of years since I last actually played it. Cause I don't wanna, I don't wanna like throw out an opinion and me not be right about it. When I first played it, I enjoyed it. Um, most definitely will say though, while your favorite Devil May Cry is one, I'll get made fun of this. It's like my um, pocket my favorite. Is four. It's minus four. Closeted though. Or closeted, um, pocket closeted, either I, or for me because fucking. Uh, if someone were to say, oh, you can't see DMC through, everyone says DMC three. I'm gonna be like DMC one. <laughs> Oh yeah, I mean, true. They wouldn't. They wouldn't be wrong. Everyone does say DMC. And I don't. I do. Do think I have so played count. DMC totally one true. more than I have <laughs> three. I played three when I first started, like when I did my Double May Cry binge. Because for the longest, the only Double May Cry I played was four, which isn't the best one to start off with, in my honest opinion. Not, I will. I agree with you. Not the best one to start with. And it, I don't think it's the best to start off with any of the other ones aside from one. 
just simply because I know that anyone who starts off with three, four, or five do not want to play one. Just because, oh, I can't do style switching. I can't do all these crazy combos. But I yeah. think if you go but, into that as in the order of re of release instead of storyline, you'll have a much logical. better time. Also, if you beat DMC one, I think the other games are going to be easier because that's the hardest one in my opinion. I think with me is that while you're right, I think like if you're like you're like, like super new to the series or whatever, like yeah, I want to get into Double and Cry, like totally, like play four, five, or three, whichever one of the ones I you think want, like that like, if you're willing to go back and deal with you yeah. not having as much as you would in three four or five because you're not going to have style switching you're not going to have instant weapon switching because in order to switch weapons in dmc1 you have to click in the trigger i think and that's how dante will switch your, was stick, wasn't it yeah that's what uh, the trigger is and uh, that's what i meant by trigger the um stick i don't remember which stick i always remember when i play it but not like off the top of my head but you have to like yeah. click that in and Dante will switch between Ifrit and um Alistair. Alistair, I couldn't remember his name. I almost said something. I, I, Lucifer is almost what I said. But yeah, he would switch between those, and it's not instant like DMC three. Again, there's no style switching. It's it, it's a lot more, I guess, grounded. I don't know what else yeah. word to use there. So if you're willing to like deal with that, a, a more of a regression, I would honestly say if you have a switch get dmc3 on switch because oh. i before um dmc3 i mean even the still dmc3 is still a good one to start off with mm -hmm. um but even yeah, i think the definitive way to play dmc3 now ever since the switch release is the switch version of the game because you can either play it the original yeah. way or you can have style switching from the future games so even yeah. if you don't start off with three, if you get that on Switch, you're not gonna be too hurt. I mean, sure, you have to deal with styles differently, and that may be a slight hassle, even though I personally like yeah. styles I, like, maybe the most in three, just because I think Gunslinger has the coolest shit in three, in my opinion, minus no stop shotgun stinger. Which I, I don't think it has, I don't know. I think for me, with the addition of Pandora in four, that... I think DMC 4 as a gunslinger is pretty like pretty gnarly. And in, in addition with like what they added to uh when they added Pandora to the game and all that good stuff. I can't really speak a whole lot for DMC 4 because Dante is possibly my least played character in DMC 4. Cause I think Dante is the only most played character for me is because I played like I played like a bunch of Bloody Palace with Dante yeah, in 4. The thing is I don't and with each Shovel May Cry, I don't really play Bloody Palace like that. Everyone else loves to play it, but I actually enjoy going through a level. And my issue with Dante yeah. is that he doesn't have fun levels. <laughs> Nero doesn't, doesn't have a lot of fun levels. Well, I don't want to say he doesn't, but Nero has some levels that I don't like going through, and Dante is majority unfun levels. And sad I thing is, Trish is the exact same way, because Trish is fun to play as, but she she's over Dante's levels. Not great. The thing is, with, with Devil May Cry 4, the game... What? I don't even think it's supposed out. to be played with Dante in mind. Wait, hold I on, said that on my thing. I think with Devil May Cry 4, if you look at its gameplay and how like you play the game, I think the game is obviously supposed to be catered towards Nero. Not just storyline-wise, but gameplay-wise. Because It felt like they last second remembered, oh, right, Dante's in this game. We gotta do something. <laughs> Because from what like I know, the, the game is literally rushed. And something a lot of people like to point out is that when you're in the, well, I think Fortuna Castle. Is that the snow area? Fortuna Castle? Is that so. the paintings is literally concept art and people like the clown on that because that's a little fucking weird, I guess. I never really, I don't know. So it bothers some people. It never really bothered me. Like when I clown on DMC4, it's just because I think a lot of the bosses are kind of lame and that Dante That just sounds like something suck. any other dev company would do. That sounds like something Capcom would do. Oh, yeah, to me, to me the, ca the concept art thing sounds cool, which reminds me that like some people think that as an unlockable concept art is actually lame, like that it's a no, lazy effort. Like and I think and, that for people who don't do art, it's probably yeah. lame. But to you and me, that shit is fucking cool to see. 
I fucking love seeing concept art for games. Art is literally like beating a game at like fucking four in the morning and then scrolling through the concept art after you beat it to get like another like extra like. I remember um back when Sonic Generations came mm -hmm. out and I got it on PS3 is that I would actively go for red medals. One, because I wanted to unlike music to listen to in levels because you could change the music in that. And that was a fantastic feature in that game. But also because you could unlock concept art for the games and I would always look at that art and try to draw it. It's one of my favorite things in games to have, especially games that I really like. Concept art is a fucking fun thing to study. Oh yeah, I, I like looking at it. It's very, it's very pleasing to the eye to look at. Like, um, I think was it, was it Sonic? Yeah, it was Sonic Generations for the 3DS because that was like the first copy I of think, the game I actually. I think that had concept art as well. I know that I, I hundred percent that game. Well, hundred percent it as in I use my play coins to buy everything. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, I understand that one. Um, but yeah, that one, it was really nice, like, listening to, like, the gallery music and, and just scrolling through, like, all the concept art, little art things that they shared, like, the big statues they took pictures of. It was, mm. it was nice. But, like, at its core, like, concept art, I wouldn't even say it's a sense of fulfillment, but it's like, it's like, yeah, I can now look at this. I can, I can come back to it. I feel like concept art, only at its core weighs a lot is when you just beat the game and you have nothing else to do with that game at that point yeah it's like devil may cry 3 when yeah, you beat devil may cry 3 like you look through the options menus. i know you yeah, know dmc3 i actually don't think i looked through that shit i remember seeing some of like i think the victory screens the game has or like the silly screens that it has for like that that the um devs did for fun like there was a fighting yeah. game mock-up screen they had in one of them for um one of the screens in DMC three. I remember not knowing about that for the longest. I think, like, like you said, like you know, you cut out again. It beats you sitting with your computer, as it like like you said, like if you're like if you're not an artist, it's like it pretty won't it won't mean much to you. But if you are an artist, concept art kind of like. It beats looking online for like 30 minutes. Looking Especially for if you're just some kid drawing, bro. Or just having your TV up, getting out your sketchbook, being like, oh shit, bro. This is this is the secrets right here. I could get better from this. It's, I don't know. It's hype. Yeah, it's, it's, it's nice. It's, it's nice. Speaking of hack and slashes, though. Um, Ninja Gaiden, Ninja Gaiden Master Collection comes out the same week as Strive, just the day after. I was going to pre-order it, but I looked at the pre-order bonuses for it, which I already told you before already, but you probably forgot. And it was just like a bunch of like avatars and stuff that they would 100% make like shit you could get once. You can get once what? I mean, like a day before, like a good hour before it came out. As it on um, the Resident Evil 8, as you know, you had told me to just pre-order the game because it was like an hour before the game actually came yeah, out. Yeah, I was like, I was why like, did you just pre-order it? <laughs> so I did. I, I, had, I had pre-ordered it and I was like, cool. Playing the game like a good hour before everyone else. But um, it was fun. But um, I'm really, really excited for that collection because... How long has it been since we actually got in a an actual Ninja Gaiden game? And I don't mean like Yaiba Ninja Gaiden Z or whatever, because that doesn't count. But we, some people might disagree with me. I don't give a shit. But is I think that Ninja a good Gaiden game? 3, I don't even know if it is. Three Ninja? No, not three Yaiba. Yaiba, it's okay. It's it's all right. It's not Ninja Gaiden, but it's I, all right. I remember visually it's, looking all right, but I, it was a game that I could never tell if it was good it's 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 fine really like i played it it's it is okay it's just not ninja gaiden mm -hmm. that's all i can say Which that's is fair it's a different it's like, and everything yeah like how can i word it oh shit it's like like dmc devil may cry like it's an all right game it's just not devil may cry like like three three is good if you don't know any better Three is a good game if you don't know jack shit about Ninja Gaiden. It's your first game. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But, of course, like the chump shit I am, and since I love Team Ninja, I'm going to play all three. And I'm going to love it. Because I am I am a soy boy who wants his Ninja Gaiden game to get more reputation. Hopefully, 
with this with this game releasing there is probably a new avenue for a new ninja gaiden game if there is great if there isn't fuck if anything fuck. i don't think one is where we're like art is destined but usually when um collections like this is released it's used to gauge interest because before we got dmc5 we did get all of them ported to ps4 we did we very much did oh speaking of ports and shit um no more heroes um that is coming no more heroes one and two are coming to steam on june 8th oh wait so really I, yes it's coming to steam june 8th i think hold on i'm looking this up i didn't hear about this whoa no more heroes oh, yeah. on steam yo oh it's already what oh god it's already on steam hold up it comes out in hold two up. days bet are you doing stuff with baby that come out in one day <laughs> This should come out tomorrow. <laughs> Holy fuck. Not tomorrow. It comes out on the 9th. Today's the 7th. Um, I didn't hear about this. I, I don't know how this news flew flew over my head. No, that shit was flooded on Twitter. That shit was trending and everything. When? Like, how how many days ago was it? it was, I won't even say yesterday. It was like two days ago. Two days ago, let's see. I was at work. I've been I've been real fucking oh, busy at but work. But it didn't trend for very long. All yeah, I, can say. I I was at I've been at work. I didn't know that No More Heroes is getting ported to PC though. Is just the first one or the second as well? Oh, yeah. The No More Heroes one and two. So I can I can literally play these without mouse and keyboard now, and I'm great. I'm grateful. Well, you didn't need mouse and keyboard for two. Two had um controller support. One though only no, had controllers. Yeah. I huh? only played one. Oh yeah. I remember, I only. Oh yeah, I got. Wow, wow! I'm about to own these games a third time. Wait, no. Yeah, a third time. Um, I bought the. the I have the physical. Ver well, I don't have them yet, but I, I pre-ordered the physical versions of these games. Um, limited run games had a thing going on where they had um physical copies again limited for No More Heroes, um one and two. And I spent the money for it. Let me see. Hold on. I'm pulling it up right now. I sp Oh, wait. Where is it at? There it is. I spent 195 bucks on this special <laughs> bundle. It call is the... Oh, wait. No, the 190... It's 195 because my dumbass made the mistake of buying an um, PS2 slash PS1 HD cable with it. And then not realizing that, oh, this thing, I'm never going to receive it until no more, until like they ship no more heroes, which is oh, all, yeah. it still says order place. It was the Santa destroyed bundle. I, I think you can find that online. Um, I don't remember everything it comes with. I'm going to be real with you. <laughs> I just know it comes with like the flag, um, from no more heroes. Hold I on. Let me look it up. The thing, I don't think no more heroes for me as a, I used to be a fake no more I'm still am a fake no more hero you played fan. one of them now though at least I, I, I played one right but the thing is was that at some point I was like I fucking love no more heroes I was like yo those games fucking amazing like shit I think I didn't play it I gave it the Yakuza treatment I want to play the game really bad I will wait an additional three or so years before I play it though for no reason and oh, right. oh, the art connects to with the um both of the versions as well. I'm trying to like find on, the exact one I had. Also about ports, Shin Megami Tensei uh, Nocturne. Um, apparently I haven't that heard game, anything about it on PC lately. I don't it's know. It's easy. Better. Well, yeah, I heard it's it easy like, if you go on the merciful mode or whatever. Apparently, um, I want to get it, but it's like I don't. Oh, I just. Oh shoot! Dude, like. Oh, so I think with it, I'm gonna. I guess you could tell. Found okay. something else? Okay, so I'm like looking up stuff for the um, like the bundle I got for the physical version of the No More Heroes. Be behind the scenes interview and art book, reversible um, 18 by 24 inch poster, which looks great. I actually want more posters. Um, it comes with the soundtrack on DVD, which is something I want to have more of of games soundtracks. Oh, yeah, um, that's that's one thing I want to do too. I want to have like more shit like that. I want to have more physical copies of games I actually like. I don't want to be like the, the I won't even say it. I don't want a Scott the Wasp collection, but I want a collection of games I really really like. Um, like I'm still looking for a physical copy of Osher's Wrath. Dude, I already filled up my bookshelf. <laughs> but I need to get a shot. um, 
I want since fucking Mira died. I, I actually do want to start buying some physical copies of Berserk, and I just want to have a row of them on my uh, bookshelf, but I don't know if I have the space for it, which what I'm thinking about doing is, I think you've seen before, but I have like wall shelves that are on like the kind of close to like higher up on my um ceiling, almost to my ceiling. Mm -hmm. And I think I want to have sure. them go around my room and I'm going to have, as I get more stuff, I'm going to have shelving go around and have more stuff on them. I think that would look sick, especially, I don't know, with some cool, maybe lighting or something. I don't know. But I think for any figures, maybe, or maybe I'll just have the books up there. Because I'm going to be honest, I may, I, I when I, I'm going to own them physically and they're expensive, I'm never going to read them. <laughs> they're going to be a thing for collection because I already read them. And it's, oh, yeah. it's just for me having, owning something from it i guess you could say because i really like jojo part four and i own the first um, volume of part four and i haven't touched it to read it i actually may consider reading it at one point just because i, I actually have I i've never read jojo um, I, no, I mean you aren't really missing out on a whole lot yeah, no really. the anime <laughs> adaptions the only thing i'd be missing out on is like names which Pretty I already kind of know about. I, speaking of which, I listened to the song um, Dirty D's Done Dirt Cheap for the first time. Oh, really? Because um, I got tired of my S Spotify playlist. And I went on to SoundCloud. And you know how it has like those playlists made for you based off of the songs you listen to? Yeah. At some point, I, I think, you know, I know what song it was. It's because I remember the Torture Dance song at one point and I started listening to it on repeat. So it made one mm -hmm. for JoJo music, and I just kind of let that play, and eventually it led to I'm um, Dirty D's Done Dirt Cheap today, and that's when I listened to it, and I was for like, oh shit. Me, my, my entire recently played on Spotify has been nothing but Guilty Gear, Blaze Blue, and Under Night and Burn. Oh, under fine. the exception, like, under exception of like that one song I listened to. Um, what else is there? But Mine isn't have, anything have, too different. It's either a podcast, my playlist, two of my playlists, or just a random artist that I maybe have been on like a binge for at some point. Yeah. It's, I need to like, I've been thinking about making a Persona playlist for like the, um, more of like my favorite daytime tracks. I know they're not going to last yeah. me through work, but every now and then one comes on on my playlist and it's a good vibe. Dude, what I'm tempted to do is hope, I hope. Arxis gets wind of this. They probably won't, but I want them to change the album art for some of these damn, some of these soundtracks, because if you hadn't noticed... Oh, dude, I was going through all the Guilty Gear soundtracks, and, like, I would go to the same one on accident, because I'm just trying to look for certain songs to add to my playlist. Dude, I was looking for a certain version to keep yourself alive, and I would keep going to the same playlist on accident from when trying to just go through every one, just because I think it would reset and scroll back up, so then I have to figure out where I was. Like, it got to the point now where... Well, it got to the point now where I'm convinced that I'm, like, I'm just going to make a separate playlist of... All of the Guilty Gear songs of that of that like particular order, because what they did was that they they just compiled all of them under one soundtrack. And I'm like, what they should no have done problem. is just because album the ones with the same album art, I get it. They're split because sit different different discs. Yeah, but just have Guilty them all Gear, together. Like, yeah, or I wish um Spotify would automatically do that. I just put them all together if they're a part of like the same disc. But sadly, I think with, with how the way that things are uploaded, that's not gonna happen that way. But it's super yeah. inconvenient when some of the stuff is under the same thing and you have to go through all these different ones. Like overall, like for Blaze Blue, Blaze Blue, it's it's I feel like it's worse for Blaze Blue because with Blaze Blue is that Blaze well Guilty Gear Guilty. Like with Guilty Gear, is that like you know you you have like yeah you got your Keep Yourself Alive, Holy Orders, and all that good stuff. Uh, like Liquor Barn Drunkard and all that good stuff. For Blaze Blue, for most of are they from Japanese? Chrono Fantasma, no. Oh, I thought that all of the songs just about have the same name. <laughs> My so issue, now, and this is with the Persona music on there. Some, is that they're not consistent with the naming because some are in English, oh, yeah. some are in Japanese. 
Because yeah. when yeah. I um, when the Persona music showed up on Spotify, I actually struggled to find it because anything I typed in didn't bring it up. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, where is it? I don't know if I had really? the same issue with the Guilty Gear stuff. I don't think I did. Let me type in Guilty Gear. Yeah, no, Guilty Gear immediately gives me sign and all that. But I think when I typed in Persona, it like, oh, yeah, there's Persona 5 original soundtrack. I guess it's showing up now. Maybe because it was fresh at the time. But before, it was not giving me any of these. Yeah. See, the thing is with, um, with Guilty for me is that I, I, I listen to very specific songs in a, in a specific order. Like, I'll listen to Keep Yourself Alive, um, Ordinary Life or whatever, and then I'll hit up fucking Zato's theme. Then, then I'll start hitting, like, Freesia birthday train. Fucking, I'm looking then, through Atlas's oh. shit right now, and I realized that they have all of these Persona albums, but they're, you know how, like, Capcom and Sega has them under their own company? They have all their albums together. Yeah, the Atlas some of them is just some random right Japanese now. shit, and then it's Persona 5 and Persona <laughs> 2 music. And then when you try to look for either other ones, like Persona 4, Signs of Love is under a different artist. I'm pretty sure this is the um, singer for the songs. And it's they're all over the place, and it makes it difficult to like look for exactly what you want unless you know the name of the artist. Or you just kind of know like a playlist that leads to one of them. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Crash Score music is on... Um, Spotify. I'm gonna add that to the sauce. Well, yeah, I favorited the um, like fucking some of the Street Fighter soundtrack too is in Japanese, but those names of the songs are in English. I I remember at one point I learned how to read cornered in Japanese because I was looking for Phoenix Wright music from Capcom and they all were in Japanese. Like I don't even think I have the yeah, uh, like ninety percent of the Persona soundtrack is just in Japanese. Except for like the uh, like the concerts. So I noticed we kind of massively derailed. Um, what else was there about um, your week? Because you we were talking about. Oh you, yeah, <laughs> you stopped. You stopped at um, fucking blasphemous. Oh, blasphemous! Like it, good game. Not reviewing that shit. Game is too long, too hard. But good game though. Granted, though, I gotta give us props. That means we're podcasting well. We derailed into a whole conversation. We did. And last time um, I looked at the time here, it was at like 38 minutes. Now we're at an hour and two minutes. So, hey, that means we derailed and had a long conversation. We're already doing better than our past selves. Yeah. Because I remember oh, we would have blocks of silence we would have to cut out because we actually really did not fucking do <laughs> Um, This week. This week, just briefly... I have played Katana Zero. Oh, how's that? Because I know you started. Did you start that last night? I started it last night. I'm sure I'm somewhere near the end of the game. The game is fun as fuck. Yeah, no, I I haven't <laughs> bought it yet, but I I believe I watched uh, Vinny Vine sauce. I believe I watched him play it at um one point long ago. And even though I didn't play it myself, I did enjoy watching his playthrough of it. And I would like to play it at some point. I just haven't been in the mood to ever like go ahead and play it, not or even buy it. I don't even know if it's uh, doubt is still on sale. I know it's on my wish list though. But yeah, no, that game is great. You don't really need to play it to even know that it's pretty good. Like, dude, I just know that you can get caught up in that game so fucking much that time literally just shoots by. Uh -huh. I'm pretty sure I clocked already like a good four hours in it game is fun as shit only thing i don't like about it is there's there's a particular section where he plays like this blonde dude yeah i heard like, about him and i know but i think i remember seeing him do some cool shit i know he has like a gimmick different from the other dude i think right yeah he does i like it it's cool but i don't like that i have a cooldown for like when i can like slash at some shit again because it kind of fucks with the gameplay um, yeah because the other dude doesn't have a cooldown you just gotta slash at shit yeah. right yeah um first time playing it it is a little weird it's it's not something you'd be used to but it's fun as shit though. um i think for me it's nothing that wouldn't like be too weird to me because it makes me think of games like um oh shit 
I just realized, I, I, don't I own, um, what's the fucking game I'm thinking of that I was about to say? Hold on, I'm scrolling through my Steam library. Um, what's that one shoot game? I forgot the name of it. Hotline Miami. I own that game and I haven't played it, but it reminds me of games like that. I'm gonna download that. Oh, actually. yeah, definitely. It reminds me of that, but, you know, with swords. There's a free game on Steam called Red Hot Vengeance. It's a game you can literally beat in one sitting, in my opinion. It's nothing like, um... It's nothing too crazy. It's you're literally a free Hotline Miami clone, I guess you could say, with mod support. It's similar to that, yeah. even. I feel like I've played a more similar sprite game like that. But it's a really fun, one of those really fun games where you get a little addicted to it for a little bit. You go through it, you're having fun. And then you, you'll you probably drop it after you've beaten it once. You maybe will beat it twice. But it's not like you're going to drop it because you're bored of it. It's just you've, you've had, you feel satisfied at the moment, maybe. Yeah. And you'll like One come back to it whenever you feel like doing like a run with different shit happening or just trying to test and see what how good you can be at the game or whatever, you know. Um, to briefly conclude my week, I have played Sonic C D. You know I don't like it, don't like the game. <laughs> that is my week. How Sonic C D. Oh man. Um <laughs> I, I remember you said it out of nowhere that you bought it. I was like, oh, yikes. Because Sonic CD is a game that people love to gas up. And even I did at one point. Until I actually kind of played it. And it's like, this is a game. And like, before people think anything. Because a lot of freaking YouTubers did shit. Or just like the shit on Sonic. I am actually a big fan of Sonic. But there are some Sonic games. Not a whole lot. But there are some that I don't think are good to go back to or just wasn't really that great to begin with. Yeah. Um, for example, Heroes, but I can get into that. I don't know if we ever do a Heroes playthrough or some shit, but right now we're talking about CD. Yeah. It just depends. Yeah. Um, CD, though, was a game that I thought was super fucking sick because it has an amazing soundtrack, which still holds up, for, for me anyways, for the Japanese soundtrack. I think a lot of the American ones aren't that great because it, I don't think they fit the tone super well, in my opinion. Now, I do dig, um, I think, the U.S. version of Stardust Speedway, but that's the only one I could think of off the top of my head. I, not a lot of them I really fuck with. But again, good soundtrack, fantastic soundtrack, and a wonderful opening and ending sequence. Um, I think that the main thing that carries that game is the soundtrack and its opening animation. Because, it's level design, name? Yes. It's level design... Like I walked into this, like yeah, I'm expecting like some Sonic Two, like yeah, no, not it's even... different. It's very different. It's more labyrinth-like because they expect you to actually explore it. And it always bothered me when people would say, "Oh, classes on a game set exploration and shit," but they technically did not. They had exploration to a degree, but not shit you actively had to go out of your way for it was more like if you went to this pathway instead of the other pathway you are more likely to find rewards the game still rewarded you for going fast but also playing good enough at the game to go in certain like directions and whatnot like the bottom path usually either it's usually the lamest path it's the most say for a water level like um hydrosity Hydro hydrosity hydrocity yeah. i Honestly, I don't know. I don't keep up with how I say it. Don't care. Um, <laughs> for example, that level is a good example to where if you're on the bottom um, section of the level, you're more likely to be in water, and it's kind of the more lame part of the level, in my opinion. The middle is sort of be like in and out of water. You're kind of on platforms, kind of not, while the highest part of it is the Chemical most plant. most out of water. Chemical plant. Chemical yeah, plant has you in out of water. Yeah. Or like a lot, Still of, water, though. a lot of stages of Sonic games didn't have you actively expecting to like explore for shit. You were supposed it was a game where you're supposed to go from point A to point B fast and you know try not to get hit, grab a chaos emerald if you stumble upon a check let's say a checkpoint, or a big ring, which is kinda hard for me to save exploration for that, because I don't totally care for it like that. You just because stumble across real. Yeah, no, I don't really like, because, I don't know, for me, I don't really like going out of my way for shit in Sonic games. My main thing no. is, for me in a Sonic game, I really enjoy just going really fast through a level, like, and, like, being a fucking badass, and, like, knowing what's coming up, and knowing, like, oh, okay, jump over this, slide through that, or under that, or whatever, spin through, uh, under this loop. How's the quickest way I can beat this level? 
That's I I enjoy Sonic for just going through a level fast. But CD has this whole shit with the time stones and the past and present thing. And that either I think there's different ways to get a good ending. You can either do the special stages and get time stones. Or I think if you go to the past, I think or the past or the future. Past, I think is the past. You can destroy the robot generator. Which, okay. You have to look for, first of all, you have to look for where that robot generator is or find like the Metal Sonic um, hologram as well because that's another thing you got to find that is like terrorizing animals or some shit. I don't know. It makes no sense. It just for randomly me, show up. It was, it was like, I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm feeling it. I'm going fast. Fuck. I'm about to take and time warp. And then you hit, hit a the wall. <laughs> and then I hit a spring and or a wall. And then I'm like, I don't like this game. And springs are iffy because sometimes it could be like the ones where there's two springs and it's bouncing you back and forth. Those are helpful. Those are the only time, the, the only Sonic game where those are helpful because you're yeah. keeping up your speed so that you time travel. Other than that, though, usually it's like, oh, past or future sign placed in an area where you can't really pick up speed. Because you'll have to like hit a wall or fucking time a jump right at this perfect time and expect all this shit to come up. And it just doesn't help. It, it expects you to go to the past or um, past or future, but you can't even really do that because of the fact that you're constantly being stopped. Constantly. It's Sonic 1 level design and I fucking hate it. It's Sonic 1 level design, but even more inconvenient. It is. It is. But that that concludes my my entire past week and a brief part of my current week. How about you, Chief? What has your past week been like? I'm been like my dude. Well, first of all, I had to take a sip of water. Ugh. I've been, you know, not even on video games yet. I've been experimenting. I, I told you, Joseph, about this. I've been on a, like a water experiment because all of these like <laughs> special <laughs> waters yeah. that people drink. So I've been drinking smart water. There's Icelandic water, I think it's called. There is this Essentia water that I'm drinking right now, which I think is my favorite. Um, what else? There was some other waters I tried out. And I've been f just been drinking water. I have not... I have usually would drink a can of Monster before I go to work. Or I would drink... Drinking. I've been drinking only water. Um, it's either... <laughs> as of late, it's been water and tea... I even, um, I think I tried some weird, like, freaking antioxidant drink that was, like, strawberry lemonade flavored. And it said it had one gram of sugar. I'm like, one gram of sugar means literally nothing. Why even advertise that? <laughs> you already know people are going to flip, like, flip shit if they look and they see, like, 20 grams. No, it's not even like that. The people, the people who want to have something sweet still, but they don't want to stop. They'd be like, hey, it still has some sugar in it, even though it's like, dude, this it's not literally that is bad. It's not gonna have like that much sugar or like that much of a taste difference from like zero grams huh. to one gram. Whatever. On a water experiment and Essentia is so far the best one. Icelandic a dude told me that that's the best one and I tried it and it and it's as the name says, it's literally it literally tasted like ice cubes that were thawed out. Now, that's literally what I was thinking about. It was like, it wasn't even bad, but it's like, this really does taste like an ice cube that melted in a cup. That, that sounds like some vile action. You know how, like, water will sit out for, like, two yeah, days Yeah, that's what bottle. it It tasted... Because, you know, I don't know if you drink it, but have you ever had, like, ice that has melted before? Or drink Or drink water from melted ice? It tastes clearly different. Yeah, it really does. It it's like... The taste isn't super distinct, but it's it's enough for you to be like, there. These are two different kinds of water. Yeah, and so I was drinking. It's like it's it does not taste as bad as ice water, but this is clearly ice water because friggin' it even says it's like ice from like glaciers in Iceland or some shit like that. I'm like, yeah, no, I can I can tell it tastes like thawed out ice. <laughs> But, Imagine. Fucking shafted. but aside from my water arc of drinking lots of water now, um, I recently have gone back and completed God Hand, which honestly, I'm glad I did. And it's a very fun game and I may do new game plus. I don't know yet. Um, it's 
on it's a very it is a difficult game but i i can't nothing felt as difficult as i guess the, some of the later levels no boss actually feels that hard you do die to them a couple of times but you kind of get the download on them and you just kind of know like just hope and pray just hope you get those dodges out and hope you don't get hit hope you have enough meter for this and that and the other and it ends up not being yeah. that bad because the final boss wasn't even that bad for me i died to it like maybe once or not, i don't know about once but maybe twice yeah i feel, I feel where you're coming from and like it wasn't that bad um it will have you feeling kind of irritated but then when you think about it it's like oh wait this actually wasn't even that bad of a boss fight <laughs> the well, only time you, you feel like, like the only time you feel genuinely irritated i could say is like sometimes they'll have um levels where there's too many enemies on screen on screen and near the end of the game mm -hmm. it's a lot more of the beefier enemies that are like harder to fight and they play harder and I don't think those levels are that fun, especially when they put a demon in the mix. You 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 really start having to plan out how are you going to go about this. It, it would get to the point where like, oh, you see this one guy. Let me taunt at him or throw a box at him so that he's separated from the group and they won't get aggroed. So then I can take this guy out alone and he won't be a problem later on. You have to do a lot That's of shit like Kuz. that. It's your Kuz in a nutshell right there. But yeah, no, God Hand I, is a game that I am satisfied to finish a hundred percent and a I game that i started oh wait what were you gonna say i said i think for like games like god hand and shit i feel like those games while it is nice to play them on like like fresh like fucking fresh ass like new file no moves i feel like i do games like that like but with re4 like i played that shit on professional i started another professional run today but on pc I was like so fucking tempted. I was like, dude, I'm like, fuck this game. I've I've did my professional. I've done my two I fresh like once professional. I in it. I beat it on normal too. I have my rights to play it on easy or new game plus. I I don't know if I'm ever gonna play it on hard, cause then I that's think how I that's. You said what? That's how I do every Resident Evil game. Like once I beat it on hardcore or like it's hardest difficulty, I start getting the DLC items and I start playing the game. I start getting the infinite ammo. Like, this is my playground now. It depends on I the can game, because if the game is already kind of difficult on normal, I'd feel less inclined. But I'll do shit, like, I'll fuck around on normal or easy. Um, if whenever we do do a God Hand on playthrough, it's going to be on easy, 100%, because fuck. Yeah. <laughs> normal. But I'm thinking normal. about doing a new game pl um, plus run on my own. Simply because it makes it a little bit easier just for my... Because it's really just a curiosity run. I want to do a kick-only run. Yeah. I want to have moves that are only kicks. I want to see how that goes. Because I I did um, a fist-only um, move set for like my prim primary um, square attacks. Because... With lubed up. You said what? I said lubed up and ready. Fist-only. Yeah, because the thing is with God Hand is that like with the punches and shit that you throw out, it's like enemies are the how stun works is like how many times have they been hit and you can have multi-hit attacks so you would line up as many multi-hit attacks with the best damage as possible and you would kind of know and it also would um create more time for you to like break their guard if they're blocking so it was yeah. like it's the best way to go about the game if you want to have like oh punch 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 oh you're blocking let me break your guard real quick if you're like if, especially if you learn their pattern of when they're going to block it becomes a much easier game when you do that but i don't know how different that's going to be with kicks i'm curious about that so your your kick run is pretty much going to be an experimental run to see see what you can and can't do yeah because um the thing is is that a lot of the kicks have different properties some have juggle state, some are like a lower kick, some are a high kick, it depends. Like kicks are more likely to actually like do something to the enemy, like send them flying or some shit. Punches can do the same thing, but there's not as many of them. A lot of the punches are literally meant for strings. A lot of people yeah. don't recommend you have it to where it's like a punch, punch, kick, in the, in the, or like a kick in the middle of your punches, it's either one or the other. Just because it's kind of easier for you to get like, a, cause you want to have a flow to your moveset. And it's harder to, it's yeah. you can do it, but it's harder to make a flow when it's all different. Um, no, I see what you mean. Something that clearly flows together that I should try out at some point actually is the drunken moves. Do you have drunken combat moves? 
and how yeah. they all have different properties in the sense of like, oh, are you dodging around this way or the other way while, while doing your combos and shit? So mm -hmm. that's their like primary difference with those. But yeah, no, there's all types of runs you could do for the game. Uh, I'm primarily interested in doing a kick run. I think uh, I like games where you can like you can take you can just fuck around and try different shit. And I think games like that. Uh, I don't know though. why, but. Yeah, games like that. Like, games that I can continually boot the fuck up and just do, like, do dumb do shit like that. something different. Yeah. There's like, even I've, I've a thing people... called a kick me run because there's a cutscene in the game where the girl who's with Jean, Olivia, she puts a sign that says, like, kick me on the, on your back at one point. And whenever enemies see that, they, like, they get enraged like they, um, like they do when you taunt at them. So it makes the game harder because dudes are more likely to, like, jump you and shit. But in order yeah. to keep the kick me sign on, you have to never activate your god hand. Mm, interesting. So that's why people call it's like a kick me run because it's fucking it's harder mode. Imagine playing hard mode with that shit on. You have to be a fucking god at the game. But I uh, like, I feel satisfied knowing that I beat god hand, but I will never beat a Dark Souls game. <laughs> Except Neo 2. And like Neo. Neo. I I I will gladly play Neo, but fucking Sekiro, I couldn't beat it. Uh I think I started a Souls game, couldn't beat it. I don't, I don't even remember what Dark Souls 3, I started it, couldn't fuck it. I couldn't I couldn't beat the first boss back then. But granted, back um, then, back then I didn't even play Neo yet. Yeah. Which I need to do. I need to get Neo and Neo one on. Neo one and two on PC. Um I've been I realized lately that holy shit, a lot of a lot of the games I want to play look like pretty or PC. Yeah, a lot of I have I have minimum PC. specs. Like I have I mean like the minimum specs for just about everything. I just don't have enough CPU. Which so Oh right, when does that come in for you? I don't fucking know. Like uh, they keep canceling my goddamn order midway through and they keep refunding me the money. So I'm like, fuck it, I'll just wait. Um I talked with my old man about it a little bit. Um he built his new PC already. Mm. Um, completely like whole fucking glowy RB, RBG fucking computer. You know he um, spent big bucks because graphics cards are man. mad expensive out of everything right now. Oh yeah. Because oh, yeah. everyone um, who is stuck yeah. inside is like, hey, let me turn my walk-in closet into a fucking mining ring for Bitcoin. Fuck you. Oh yeah, man. P like FYI to the people like who are like doing that shit. Um, fuck you. And any excuse you have to say is invalid. It doesn't matter. I don't care how you got it, what you're doing, what you're doing to get it. I don't care if you're like trying to like scalp or if you're like mining Dogecoin. Dude, Bitcoin, people will like freaking mine some fucking Bitcoin and then try to, they'll try to resell the freaking um, graphics card when it's already been used at their limit nonstop. It's like, bro, that thing's gonna For die the Bitcoin, second I use it. Dude. Dude, I, I made the mistake of telling my dad that people are doing that because I told, because I was telling telling him about, because he saw my computer and I was explaining to him like the pieces and everything, and I was like, yeah, the only thing that mm. I have for my previous computer in this at the moment is the graphics card. And he was like, why is that? I can't, I bet they're not that expensive. I was like, oh no, they're mad expensive right now because of people like buying um, graphics cards to mine Bitcoin. Or just a whole shortage for people trying to um, resell them. And when he heard about like the whole mining shit, he was like, yo, I gotta look into that. I need to do that. That's money. And I'm like, ah, oh, shit. I created a monster. I don't know if he's done it. I don't think he will. If anything, he'll probably do that he's, shit yeah. when uh, they're not expensive. I could totally see him looking into how to do that and doing it, though. That's some shit he does because he's the same guy. He's the same kind of person who looks into stocks. I, I tried because he tried to get me interested in it. I just can't, man. It's just fucking gambling. I can't. What well, stocks? Yeah, it's it's just gambling. Yeah, um, like I heard AMC you, stock has went up. My dad told me about it. I was like, oh yeah, I heard. Didn't really put any money in it though. I, I mean, I should have maybe, but man, I don't know what's gonna happen, and I don't care enough to like follow like stock market like that, man. I don't, like some people's like, oh, but it's freaking easy money and all. I was like, yeah, it is. But I don't feel like gambling my money, man. I need my money. <laughs> I got the lunch to buy. That, I have to get my premium chicken sandwich, dude. Hey, man, those food line chicken sandwiches that. come in clutch when you haven't eaten man, before going into work. Dude, and I had some chicken tenders today, and 
Them shits were like, them shits were spicy as fuck. Wait, food line ones? No, these weren't food line ones. Oh, these were like from some local market. Because I will say market. the food line wings are honestly not that They're great. The thing. food line tenders and popcorn chicken, bussin'. Like, um, I was in there today and I was like, I fuck, man, I'm a fucking though, so. Oh, yeah, if you're an employee, I feel like your opinion is valid. Like, yeah, your, no. your opinion matters. I, I think I only like it so much because I'm always going to work without eating anything. So then it's like, oh, immediate, well, not immediately available. I got to wait for it to be cooked. But it's like, oh, shoot, food in the store? Bet, let me get this. Because before, when I first started working there, there was this gas station I'd walk over to to get food from. And there's also like a pizza place and I think a Chinese place nearby. But like, I only have a 30 minute lunch. It's not worth it for me to go outside. I could order food, but that's even more expensive. I can just easily get a chicken sandwich for like three bucks. No, it's it's quick, easy, tastes good. Or I can, just, fuck. I can even go buy some fucking pizza rolls, put them in the microwave, eat that. I mean, they're not the same as it is in the mm. oven, but it's still something I can get real quick. Aside, from, and I don't have to clock them. out to do it. I can literally just clock out after I've already made the purchase. Or at least that's what I do anyway. I think I think for me, the one thing I don't like about like pre-made store food that's like heating up in those little um heating containment chamber things they have because you know what i'm talking about yeah i know. Like, you know like the rotisserie chickens and shit like that yeah only thing i don't like is that every so often it's not all the time every so often i'm talking like once every blue moon i'm talking like one in one thousand but my fucking chances of it of happening are like fucking high as fuck uh -huh. I'll take and I'll get it right mm -hmm. and for some awful fucking reason there will be a plastic glove in the goddamn container I have never had lying. that happen damn like, and I work at this the is fucking rotisserie ghetto chicken food lion oh no, I don't, I don't ever buy the rotisserie chicken that's a shocker though cause I don't know I, how that happens I already happens. have a bad experience with some shit like that happening before when I was in middle school like Throw some fucking filthy ass dumb dummy who's like, yo, I don't like my job, so let me throw this sweaty ass nasty hand glove in this rotisserie chicken. As if it can't be it's fucking traced. Back in a different one. Let's find your fucking skid cells in your glove. Who did it? The only thing well, I'll give places like Food Lion and Walmart is that I can steal your donuts and not have anyone be the wiser. Well, Walmart more than Food Lion because they don't keep them shits like open on display. Yeah, no. Plus, Food Lion, or at least my managers, they're fucking, they, they can tell when someone's stealing. They're always on you fucking, or not even stealing whenever you're just fucking looking sus in general. Because I remember um I had like one of the comms on and I can hear them just fucking like watching this one dude who seems mad sus because he just walked in and it was like this guy's been kicked out before. He grabbed this drink, he put it in his hoodie and then he just started walking around the store and then he suddenly left. <laughs> it's, it's, Dude, I hear man. a whole investigation going on. It's like the highlight of the day sometimes, even though I hate wearing this thing. Like, man, I'll tell you something. Though. Yes, I, I think it, yesterday, the day before that, um, there was this one guy who, like, I saw him before I was gonna go on break anyways, and, like, he he seemed like a drunk dude. I, he was one of those, like, country dudes who, always, who seem like they're always drinking. I think you know what I'm talking about. I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, he radiated that energy. And he even had, like, the face. I don't know, I was like, man, that guy seems like he's fucking always drunk. And later on, he even walks by me when I'm on my way to go get food for lunch. And he's like, hey, cool dude, you know where the alcohol is at? And I'm like, it's literally right here. You're standing right next to where it is. It's and then I keep going on about my day. And then, um right before i leave to go get my food and go to the back or the, the clock out to go get um eat um my manager just goes and takes the alcohol for the dude when he's at the register he's like sorry so we can't sell this to you because we're not it's illegal to sell to like a dude who's already under the influence or some shit i was like oh shit i fucking called it you're just like you're right here in front of it sir have, have, a, have a good day i told him where you it was Jeffrey. No, I wasn't going to get in trouble for it. It's the people who works at the register who would actually get in trouble for it. No. 
So, I mean, I could say I set him up, but, like, yo, I I just said the dude looked sus. I didn't even know that was fucking law or anything. I know gas stations do not tolerate fucking thievery, dude. I know that that shit, them gas station cashiers do not tolerate that shit. I'm pretty sure that shit gets taken out of their pay, though, which is already shitty. And that's, I don't know, that's (laughs) funny to me, because I'm pretty sure, honestly... I don't know, fuck it, you're gonna get shit taken out of your pay, but at the same time, you're working at a gas station, dude. At any point, a dude could just light you up. <laughs> I'm dude, sorry. Gas station, I, I'm sorry, certain stories, I don't think it's worth it, man. Gas stations, if you work in a family, do- um, like a Dollar General or a family dollar, you're like, there's like one or two people in there, dude. Or a Dollar Tree, like, I think with Dollar Trees and places like that, your chances of running into, like, feral ass people just depends on what shift you have dude when i used like, to get I stuck like- doing qa shit i remember i had to, i was taking or getting the trash that was in the front of our building and i just see like i think i think it's a family dollar next to my food lion i just see this lady this dude like fucking say some shit and this lady who works in the store just go off and i'm like bro what the fuck am i witnessing i better i better not see some fucking shit happen i'm about to go back inside <laughs> it was like it, it, I had the closing shift too, so I just went back in. I was like, I'll just come back later. I remember I went to a fucking Family Dollar one time. This was like when we were going to school type shit, because you know I graduated or whatever. So I I went to a Family Dollar like this one day in particular. No, this wasn't a Family Dollar. This was jo- the Dollar General. That one that's like right where the school is, right? Yeah, the ones that people would always steal from, so that I think to the point that kids weren't allowed in. Yeah, it's only like one or two people in at a time. So this one day in particular, I'm going in there, dude. I'm like, yo, I'm getting me a honey bun and I'm getting like a Powerade and I'm getting the fuck out of here. <laughs> and I grabbed my stuff and upon me going to like, I took the long way around. So like just in case, like the people that were already in line left in line, I could get there to a fresh empty line. So I'm walking, right? And I see this dude pouring. And I don't mean like slowly. I mean dumping fucking like laundry detergent into like a fucking grocery bag. And I didn't they question him. I didn't say shit. deal with that shit. <laughs> I was like, man. I was like, fuck it. And I'm like, well, I'm not going to say I don't think I've seen anything here. like that happen in Food Lion. Most I've seen is people just place shit where they where it doesn't fucking go because they were too lazy to put it back. That, or people will that, like, I hate it because I work really. in produce, so this is something I mainly have to see. Is it's people banana, will be like, like right, get the, they'll get bananas, um, um, Roma potato uh, tomatoes, Roma tomatoes, or russet potatoes, or any of the potatoes, onions. They'll put it in a bag. They'll wrap it up and they'll tie it up even and everything. Broccoli as well. I fucking hate it when they do it. The broccoli. They'll do that to all that shit. And then, literally, they'll just go and put it down somewhere. It's like, bro, if you wasn't going to get it in the first place, why did you pick it up? My thing is this, is my my rule of thumb is that if I have something and I am at the register, what I do is, is that I take it and I'm like, all right, I hand it to the cashier. Yeah, no, they'll like, they'll, like, they'll give it to someone to put it back. There's one girl who um, I work yeah. with who she she'll have the basket of stuff and she'll just walk around and put them back, put them back. She'll even ask me if it's yeah, like, something in produce. Like, hey, do you know where this goes? Like, yeah, it goes over there. It, well, like, that's the some time of them are like, shitty at it though, and they'll just place it where it doesn't go because they didn't ask you. But and that's why I, I don't like. When I see people do that shit, like, it generally bugs the fuck out of me when I see people do some shit like that. Like, I don't like when I see people knock some shit off of the shelf and they don't pick it up. Like, I'm like, dude, just, dude. it takes, like, three seconds to huh. pick it up. It doesn't huh. even, you could put it on the lowest shelf possible. As of late, just- something that has been worse than that for me is, I have, there's a potato table, and on the other side of it, there's all the potato bags. People will flip over all the bags and throw them around just so they can get to the bag they want <laughs> and just leave it how they let um how they like how they did it. I'm like, what the fuck? Was, okay. And they'll do the same thing to the salads. Though um because you know you have the like you get the salad out and it pushes them all back fo- um forward. Someone will just flip through all of them or just throw them all out and then just get the one they want and just leave it. And I'm like, bro, I have to fix this shit now. Fuck. Those well, two in particular have been the worst. 
that's why a part of me is like, man, I wouldn't mind working retail, but then I was like, I could probably work at a Krollo store, fold up these clothes nice and neat, and then have some fucko take, grab the clothes, unfold it, look at the whole graphic tee, and then just throw it back on the thing. Oh, yeah, no, which I've, is seen why. I've, I've seen videos of freaking hot topic workers be like, all right, bro, since y'all don't know how to do it, this is how you fold shirts fast as fuck. <laughs> and they'll show you, like, this <laughs> ultimate folding method. Because, like, they had the f refold. I'm guessing they had the refold shit so many times they came up with, like, the perfect way to fold. I'm glad I don't have to deal with shirts. The quickest fucking speedrun strats, 80%, 100% speedrun on, on folding clothes. Like, me, when it comes out of folding clothes, I don't. I, I fold my clothes and put them in a basket, not in my drawer. Reason is, is that when I put them in my drawer, they don't go back in the drawer. And I didn't realize I with of any of my underwear, my undershirts, I don't fold them. I just throw them in the drawer because I realize you're not going to see that. <laughs> you're not. Like but uh, my main shirts, I do um, put them on a hanger always. But anything <laughs> that, that I wear at me. home or isn't going to be visible, they they don't get folded. It's too much effort for something that people aren't going to see. I need you to listen. I need you to listen and listen carefully. Listen to me, okay? All right, you listening? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You hear me? Okay. So, my mom told me that my my 40-year-old lovely mother told me when you put on warm underwear fresh out of the fucking lawn, like out of the fucking dryer, that kills your sperm cell. Um, it could be from heat. I, I did like. not know that. Uh, let me look that up. I, 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 I felt like that's believable. I feel like she was joshing me, but she said it with the most greatest face ever you know typically you know you're like <laughs> you laugh it off no she wasn't laughing and that reminds know, me that um oh hey can't wait what wait, what what is this whoa this is not what i searched up can semen on underwear move on to other stuff in the washing machine well, that depends on what you mean here. Part of me, part of me, is saying that you found semen on something other than the underwear that, that you're trying <laughs> that you're trying to decide if it happened in the washer outside the washer. Answer the question. I say no, unless your washing machine isn't working properly, in which case I say maybe. <laughs> what the fuck? Oh my god, there's a whole paragraph to this. What the fuck? That's not what I was looking up at all. I'm sending that in the chat. It's like, in the pit. I, don't, I do not know why. Like fucking. How Jesus to remove Christ. semen stain off my clothes. Hold on, let's see all these. <laughs> if that you sounds wash, like something I was like 13. Wait, what? If you wash cum in the washing machine, will it get to other clothes? Now, there's more people asking the question. How to remove mm -hmm. semen stains off my clothes. Does washing a towel with detergent get semen stain out? If semen is wiped at a clean... You know, this is for the kids in middle school just learned about jerking off. They're just trying to, bro, so they're not getting caught. I don't blame them. They gotta know everything. Gotta know. Whoa, 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 whoa. What is this? Let me see this full question. Let me get their cut off. If semen is wiped in a cloth and is used by a woman to clean her vagina, what are the chances of pregnancy? How long does sperm live in a cloth? There's almost no chance of pregnancy from that, but not absolute zero. So there's a possibility. <laughs> oh shoot, that's the wrong one. I didn't mean to fucking send the thing. I copied the actual like thing instead of the uh, link. I'm sending these in the chat. Oh my god, I didn't. Fucking holy shit. Fucking dude, I am not fucking joking around with you, man. What would happen if I wash the semen in my hands without soap but accidentally rub it on my clit? Is there a chance of me getting pregnant? <laughs> I'm still a virgin. What? We just did foreplay. What the fuck? So you telling me all they did was play a little bit of fucking hanky spanky with his fucking, his fucking meat? Gave him a hand oh, job, a handy dandy. That's foul, yuck. This is supposed to be a, a nice. Picture. We take and we talk about video games and we make fun of people. Wait, <laughs> can I get pregnant if my boyfriend came, then cleaned it off with a shirt? After that, he washed his hands with soap right after he, right after fingered me. The questions people ask on the internet answered two years ago. I'm not even reading the answers. I'm just reading like these questions people are asking. 
how to remove cum stains from bed sheets, washer sheets. Oh yeah, plain and simple. Same thing applies to clothes. If you manage to get some baby juice on you, like while, you know, you're whacking your weed, what you do is you make up an excuse to go take a shower. Easiest, easiest shit in the world. Well, oh, the search is only yeah. giving me stuff about people trying to clean out their cum stains. I can't really find a thing about what you were talking about. But I can say earlier, I saw this TikTok about how um, for women, it can, can like kill their reproductive cells or some shit if they have a um, a hot laptop sitting on their stomach. And so this one chick would just constantly jab a hot la a laptop into her stomach and now she thinks she's infertile. And I sent that to Grace saying, here to help you out, homie. I know you hate kids. Hey, I bet it's easy to uh, fucking that, kill that off That sounds like shit. it makes sense, but I don't know if there's like an actual like science behind it. It sounds real though. I can look it up. Like, yeah, I didn't look sense. it up. You could. It's like, it, like, like when you hear it, it, it makes sense, but then there's like the other part of your brain where it's like, eh. There's a, there's some cap in that. There's a, it's, it's weird. I don't know. There's it's all like the whole mountain you can dude. learn about women. It's like the does Mountain Dew kill sperm cells kind of thing. Oh, heat from your laptop unfortunately has shown the, the damaged sperm count as well. Good thing I don't have a laptop. Oh, this is for men though. What the fuck? What about for women though? But can the same thing be like singularly applied to women though? Yeah, because I was thinking about women. No, stop giving me it about women or men. Fuck. Hold on. Shieldyourbody.com. Don't let the name laptop fool you. Laptops aren't safe. They can even be dangerous in use of your lap. And the longer you use your laptop in your lap, the, um, and near your reproductive organs, stomach, the greater the ch the dangers to your health. As you can tell, I don't commonly or not commonly, I don't often read out loud. So fuck. Let's see here. What is laptop radiation, radio frequency, blah, 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 low frequency. It's giving too much information for me to care. Fuck. Oh, boy. Anyways, uh, we derailed. Um, We finished with God Hand. I was going to say that um, I started a Sega game called Shinobi, which, I mean, I don't really have a lot to say about it. It's all right. I don't think I'm going to continue it, though. But one game I'm thinking about playing again quote unquote is castlevania symphony of the night but i'm not going to play the ps2 version i'm not going to play the psp version i'm thinking about playing the saturn version because it has some like unique content to it and i've been kind of curious about it because i think it even has some music that the other versions doesn't have the going along with those levels because you know at the start of the castle where there's like that one like random block that seems like there's you're supposed to come out from under it that's yeah. a um that's a whole area in the Saturn version that um I think I don't know if it's a Richter area but I know it's an area in the game. There's areas that are unique to the Saturn version that I want to check out. So I've been thinking about replaying um Soten. I do have a Saturn emulator, I think. I I think I have one. I think I already set it up and everything. Or I th or my Saturn emulator is quite literally um RetroArch. Either way, I'm going to play that again because i'm just curious about the differences within the game um i think aside from oh no last thing i have to talk about really that isn't just freaking work is that I, today as you know i've started watching Yu Yu hockey show i have mm -hmm. how many episodes uh, what episode am i on i've watched three episodes and it's been real good so far. I a long time ago I tried Hunter Hunter because I, if I'm right is from the same guy, and I didn't like it. It's not even that I th thought it was bad. It's just nothing about it clicked personally. So I dropped it real fast. I don't even think I saw like two episodes. I just immediately just was not into it. You hockey show. I don't know what it is about it because I don't really fuck with a lot of old anime honestly. But this one, there's something about it that is just like feels nostalgic to watch and i love its opening and ending theme it's it's kind of like city pop almost i could be wrong because fucking music ranges to so many like different like ways but it reminds me of like some of the city pop that i've been listening to lately for um some japanese music and whatnot it's it's great 
I love the, and I've been watching it dubbed, dubbed, of course, and it's great. I love it. It's been a really good time, and <coughs> it's a long anime. This has 112 episodes. I have some shit to watch right now. So, I, uh, I think I need to get back into watching anime because I've been reading more manga, if anything. Uh, it's like I can pick it up at any time. Oh, I can shit. Reread you know what? Like, I need to get back to, I need to catch up on Shaman King. I kind of dropped it. And it was nothing wrong with it or anything. It was just I got a little bit busier, and eventually I just kind of yeah, dropped the anime. Because yeah. I was enjoying every episode I was watching so far. It just I dropped it. I need to get back to it, for sure. Um, I will say one thing that kind of hurts it for me personally, and it's not even that big of a deal because I do think the sub from what I checked out the sub and dub at the same time at one point for the original, but I'm. Since I originally watched the dub of it, I'm kind of like, man, I kind of miss just like sitting here and just listening to it because I feel like I gotta, I gotta hyper focus for it. It's part of why I don't really watch sub that often. It's because sometimes I like to multitask, <laughs> and yeah, sometimes really there's maybe just not enough going on to keep me super interested, even though it's, it's keeping a smile on my face. Sometimes, man, yeah. I just, I, I, I can't keep my focus. That's part of why is. But it still is a good anime so far. It's great. I'm enjoying it a lot. I think you are the person that really like explained that to me. The whole um, you get to multitask and do a... is that I get that. I get that a lot now. Yeah, because I don't think you used to multitask when watching anime. No, I would just sit down and watch it. Yeah, no, I, I hate well, to I like did... just sit still and watch something. It's part of why I don't watch a lot of movies and um, TV shows. Like, the only time... Like, you know that um, Japan documentary I said I was watching? I think I'm on the last yeah. episode of it. I still haven't finished it. It's only six episodes. I haven't finished it because any time that it's on my mind, I'm at my desk, which I don't really want to watch it from. Unless I were, unless my mom gives me, her, like, her Netflix password. Because I'm not paying for Netflix. That shit is expensive. Really? Um, I thought it was like five a month. No, it's fucking how much is Netflix? It was something I, I remember considering and it was like nope. Nope, don't sign up. See the plans. There's eight ninety nine for a good video quality, which is well, I see they expect you to be an idiot. Cause for eight ninety nine the video quality is good, quote unquote. But then they also have resolution below that, which is 480p. Just say 480p. Don't say video quality. Yeah. If you want to pay for, if you want 1080p, 13.99. 4K plus HDR, 17.99. So yeah, no, fucking it's, and I could go for the 8.99, but I don't want to watch it in 480p. Fuck you. You're really gonna have 480p locked behind that. Fuck you. <laughs> I you just gotta watch it, man. Yeah, nah. I'm fine. I don't even watch a lot of shit off Netflix. I'm content only watching it when I'm in bed. Oh, which reminds me, though, I did make a purchase recently. I bought uh, that purchase. Thing? I bought a collection of Spider-Man, um, all the movies that we have so far. Oh, really? It's all the first three: um, Tobey Maguire, the two Amazing Spider-Man ones. Um, the two Tom Holland ones so far and Spider Verse together. Okay. Oh, that's that's. Pretty... I kind of want to have a person. small movie collection, not a big one, but just certain things. I don't even think it would be mostly yeah. a lot of stuff, but Spider Man is something I wanted to have. I wanted to own that. Aside from that, I, I don't think there's that. too much. Um. Yeah, no, I don't think there's anything else I really purchased aside from that. Honestly, I don't have much else. I plan on playing Sony at some point, I can tell you that. And um, probably throughout podcast episodes, I'll talk about my Yu Yu Hakusho journey. That is if... Um, yeah. That is if we get another one out before I even finish it, because who fucking knows. Um, it's kind of important that we did this first episode as like yeah. just you and me. And it's not even really first episode, more of a pilot episode, I guess you could say, because I'm going to label this episode zero. And it's just gonna um, be us trying it out. And then for the real episodes, I wanna try and get like Xavier or um, some of our other friends. So try to get some of our other friends in on this. Cause while me and Velvet yeah. are the main two of Media Junkies, 
our we are the host yeah we're the main two but our friends may start getting more involved with stuff now since a lot more of them are either on discord or just kind of interested like I, I didn't ask Grace yet, but I know, for example, she's been interested in doing streaming and shit. I'm pretty sure she'd be, be interested in doing some shit with us on Media Junkies. Um, I don't know about Joseph entirely, but I'm pretty sure he wouldn't mind doing some stuff. I know Xavier probably wouldn't mind. I know a lot of our friends probably wouldn't mind. But, um, do you have anything to plug before we end off this episode? Uh, my YouTube channel, that's it, but everyone knows what that is now. Just check any Media Junkies description. Yeah, Media it. Junkies description is going to be for him, Velvet Groove. For me, it's Vinny Ventus. Um, I'm pretty sure it's the same on everything, and if not, well, I mean, I'll have I'll have links and everything on wherever the podcast is uploaded to. It will be uploaded to SoundCloud. I have to look into how Spotify uploading works. I may do it there. The difference is, is that depending on where the upload is, I will have different stuff happening in it. Spotify will not have music in the background is because I don't know what the logistics is with that. Because yeah. most podcasts, because there's a whole, because you know, copyright and all that. And I want to have music in the yeah. back because I feel like it's a little empty and I could get no copyright music. But there's a certain vibe I want to the podcast that I want to use with like Catherine music or Persona music just because I feel like that fits the, the, our vibe, especially since we use like the Persona yeah. 5 style stars and all that. So we're going to do that. Yeah with um a youtube upload for this and the soundcloud upload will have music and stuff in the background because i'm pretty sure it's fine there people re-upload music no. to soundcloud anyways but spotify yeah, will have no music at all uh, it's shame. i mean there is a podcast i listen to that kind of uses video game music and it talks about video game music but still i don't know like i still don't know like the technicalities for it to really say yeah i'll upload this to here so anyways talk about it Huh? So maybe huh? we should talk about video game music next time. So maybe we should talk about video game music no. next time. Yeah, I mean, hey, I can fucking talk about video game music as much as I want. But yeah, yeah. no, this is a decent first episode. We talked a lot. I don't think there will be a lot of anything for me to cut out or for me to really edit in this. I think for the most part, I'll have to cut like maybe it's just short silences. But we didn't have a lot of those. Surprisingly, this was actually yeah. a decent like podcast. This actually has shown that we have gotten better at um have, doing this grown. because last time mm -hmm. it was difficult and I feel like we kind of just brought up the same topic last in our old, old original that it cannot be found. But yeah, yeah, and I think it'll be a lot easier once we get more friends on who will like have their own thing, especially because with how easily you and I derailed into our weeks, I think it'll be e even easier for us to go on for a long time about theirs, our friends as well, so yeah because if we keep it spaced out as well not because if we can do it um i don't think we will do it every week but every maybe every other week whenever we can whenever everyone's available because and, and the thing is is that what, what i want i don't know maybe i'm going too into our plans but what i want it to be eventually is that like at some point down the line y'all are able to record without maybe me being around or you being around or either of us, yeah. and like say the squad could just all start an episode together, and I don't know, maybe I can edit it, maybe, or maybe we can just get one of them to learn how to, and have more of us to work on it. Who knows? We'll have to see where this goes. But Bye. this is the first episode of the Media Junkies podcast, and I can't wait to find out what I'm going to name this because it's probably going to be something related to those chorus semen uh, search search um stuff. Who knows? <laughs> I'm probably going to make it based off of that. Anyways. Yeah. Yeah. I fucking. Let's get it. Adios, amigos.